Hi, it's Rachel with Stirring the Deep. I want to talk further about who the Father is and this characteristic of mercy. It, I'm learning a lot about it from the Father and He's assembling all these truths and putting all these things together and as I'm learning I want to share them with you because it is amazing and it's almost like is that it is is that spirit that light is rising that it's spirit of Christ in our spirits it's giving us more understanding okay and so that's what I'm experiencing you it's like you're seeing things deeper and clearer and these all these different concepts and it's an amazing thing that you end up having a lot of concepts that God's teaching you and showing you and working out in your life. It's all connected. And of course you have more questions because you have more things to ask about. But what I am learning is some powerful, amazing truths that if they can spark in you an understanding or a confirmation then blessed are you because I am experiencing great blessing from knowing these. The, the Father is drawing very close, very close. So I know some of the things that I'm saying may be different um, than what you've heard before, but really what you need to do is let go of the images, the pictures in your mind that you held on to about these different concepts and try to just kind of strip that way and focus on the very heart of what these concepts are because that's actually getting into and behind the Holy of Holies. When you start really drawing near to the Father and to that truth, then you, all the images, all the outside things start being removed. That's why you leave religions which is man's doctrines and structures and institutions and ways because you realize that's putting all these images and false images on God that um, can just lead you in all kinds of different directions instead of really getting to know the Father as He is, spirit to spirit, and being connected to Him in that unity. So I know it's different, but if you will just have a seeking heart to really know the truth and for that truth to be a testimony in your own life so as you get to really know the spirit of the Heavenly Father the Creator which is that peace and it's that real love that you can feel without hypocrisy with honor with righteousness holiness purity justice mercy when you start learning these things and you abide in them that's the true communion with the Father because that's what He is. He's spirit and He is all those things. So as I said, as this day is dawning, as that morning star is rising to your heart was that light, the truth, the understanding, that right-mindedness, that um, having the mind of Christ, you just start gaining more understanding and awareness. And it's a very powerful thing that's happening right now as that spirit's coming. So you have to be open to learn from that, okay? And put away and realize that a lot of things that we've learned from the past have been um, seeing God from the other side of the veil. We haven't really gone into the Holy of Holies to see Him purely. But that is now what is able to happen, okay? Because that Christ Spirit is carrying us into that really deep communion. So... That being said, God is merciful, okay? And He created this earth in mercy. And when He created this earth, He knew everything that would happen. And from the beginning, we see that Christ, the Lamb, was slain. It says that in Revelation. So from the beginning, the end was known, meaning the Lamb was slain. Christ was our righteousness, to be our righteousness. So that's the end of all things, that Christ is our righteousness. Therefore, God is able to be merciful because of that end, um, because mercy is saying that we sin and He absorbs that hurt. He absorbs that because 
And it's really Christ is absorbing that because we don't get the consequences of our actions when he shows that mercy toward us. But how is that able to maintain his justice? Because of what Christ did. Because Christ gives us his spirit, which gives us righteousness. So it's sort of like, you know, think back to even your own circumstances. And this is also why it's very important to understand the mercy of God. Because we're supposed to be merciful as he's merciful. So if we don't fully understand it, we're not, um, we're not being merciful, right? So consider someone in your life that harms you. Okay, if they come back at some point and say, and you may, you know, move on and go your own way, go your separate ways, do your thing, but it's often that lingering hurt or pain and the memory of that is there. But if they come back to you and they say with a repentant heart, like, sorry that they hurt you, they learned from what they did, it and they learned a very important lesson through all of what happened, right? Then it's like, wow, and they ended up actually being better off because they did that to you, they had that, they harmed you, but they learned from it. When you have now that, re that union with them again, that is truly a victory. That is a huge delight. And when that happens, you forget the pain because now you have a relationship that is of peace and it's harmony and it's and there's a unity and so that's what God has done with us is we were in sin we are harming him because he is holy and perfect and righteous and true and that sin is being a part of us as part of his creation and he is allowing that to happen because he knows the end where Christ will be victor because we will have his righteousness. So we, we will all come back and say, you know what? I've learned. And, you know, I it was horrible that I had to go through that, but it actually is better because I've really matured and I've learned a lot. So I know a lot more than where I was. And when God sees that, that's the true victory that he has because he has the union back with that spirit that he loves. He loves us. He loves mankind. He loves his creation. That's why he created his creation. So that's the real victory when that union is there. And so when you have um, the, all the, when you understand all these different dynamics of what God has done in this plan, you realize that he has perfect justice, perfect righteousness, perfect mercy, perfect love. It all fits together. Because you know, in Isaiah 26, 9, it says that all will learn righteousness when his judgments are in the earth. So that's what we're entering into, this time of judgment, which is really another way of saying is everyone will be learning righteousness. Now we all are learning at different times and at different speeds and at different rates, and well, in terms of how much we can actually tune in and start communing with the Father on a very intimate level and learning of him. So this is the power of mercy, okay, is that death is the eternal separation from truth. Truth is God. And that's what death is. If you're separated, you're separated. You know, because God is holy, he's here and you're here. Life is the eternal connection to truth. Because if you're always connected to God, you're always in life. Christ and that display of mercy, which is that display of mercy, right? Because God's allowed to show us mercy because Christ is, becomes our righteousness, is the link to keep us connected to life. So there is a connection back to life. And is that not what Christ did? He stood in the gap, right? Because why? He gave us his spirit. That is our salvation. And that's what's happening now is his spirit is becoming married within, within us to our spirit. They're being knit together. That is our salvation. So, yes, death is eternal unless this happened, right? Where we had the mediator. We had some kind of connection back, which was always going to happen because God is merciful. And that's how he created his his creation and that is the dynamic of mercy that it reaches out 
to the and covers the sin of another and absorbs that hurt. And so that's the other thing of how that justice is maintained because if God's absor absorbing the hurt, unless it was for Christ, that righteousness, that hurt would remain. So back to my picture, if that person never, um, to my story, if that person never came back to you and said they were sorry, they continue to live a reckless life and just harming other people, they, you know, they never learned, it's you would always have a memory in you of that pain. You'd always have that. You may have forgiven them, like just let it go, whatever, but it would always be there. That's why there's no eternal torment. The, Because God is life. There is not going to be no sorrow, no pain, no tears. Every tear is going to be wiped away. There's, none of that's going to exist because life is going to fill everything. And that's the reconciliation, right, is that when every spirit is going to learn righteousness in their own timing. And there's different ways that will happen, which maybe I'll get into another video about that. But that is how God has mercy, God has justice, and God has the victory because the justice is served when we are righteous. It's an amazing dynamic. So basically, Christ conquers death, right? Death is swallowed up. He defeats it because he infuses it with life. We, the souls, are what's dead. And as this light dawns, it's being first received by those who are ready. But as it continues to grow here, it's going to spread and fill the earth. And that's why Christ stays at the right hand of the Father until all his enemies are made at his footstool, until he there is no other power, there is no other authority but Him. Because He is that mediator, right? Until all come and then we're all in that one spirit. So that's why He's at that place, at in between places, our mediator, until all is in all. And then we're all of that same spirit. It is an amazing plan. And it is possible because of that mercy of God. Till next time, keep stirring the deep. It's the one thing that changes everything else.